Okay, hello everyone. I'm Dr. Kim. Dear my friends and colleagues from all over the world, and thank you for joining us for the Neo User Forum. About for an hour, I'm going to speak about something related to the implant. By the way, as a dentist, all of you know that dentists are highly professional from the COVID-19 transmission disease, right? So I'm very worried about your health. So please stay and work safe while you work with the patient. Okay. And also I found these days I found it's not easy to work with all this personal protective equipment like the facial mask and the face shield. Even it's not easy to communicate with the patient because I have to wear all day long the facial mask, right? So I think you are you all the same as me. Okay, so about an hour, I'm going to speak about the screw mechanics. So understanding screw mechanics helps to reduce the mechanical complication of implant while patient using, right? So let's get in. Okay, so we all know that implant dentistry is not a trouble free. We live and fight with all these problems, right? Sometimes patients come with a uh, broken implant and fracture of the screw and the fracture of the abutment, right? So let, let's talk about these mechanical issues today, okay? So I'm gonna bring the one of the article that I like, okay? So this is kind of old article which published 2020, 2012. Right? And it's about the mechanical problems of full mouth restoration, such as hybrid restoration. The author used and investigate to uh, check the Strawman and the uh, Noble Bear Care Brennermark implant. Okay? So it's covered with the full mouth restoration. Okay? And uh, they found the problem late are about. 19.7% uh, at the five year and screw fracture, right? And also they found about 40% at the 10 year. So this is study of 10 year cumulative study of mechanical problem. But as you see, once it has a problem at five years and it became double at 10 years in any issues, any problem, okay? So at the end, if you see it, uh, the complication free late is about five years, is about 31%. But in 10 years, it became 11%. So if it's safe at five years, it doesn't mean it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, problemless in 10 years. So what, by the time time goes, the problem and the list became higher than before. So we, that's why we have to do the periodic follow-up check for the implant patient, okay? Well, what kind of implant are you using, okay? Easily we divide it to the external or internal, right? By, by the way, I don't like those classification. I think it's better to divide it, uh, uh, I think it's better to, uh, I think it's better to divide the implant with the friction fit or non-friction fit connection. So most of external implants are non-friction fit connection and uh, most of internal implants are friction fit implant. By the way, some of the externals are not non-friction and some of the internal is not friction, right? But anyway, I'm gonna divide it to the external internal today, okay? So external, is similar to the beer or soju in Korea. And internal is something similar to the wine. That's why, that's what I explained. Because you're gonna need some special instrument to drink wine, right? So I think internal is more specific if you compare to the external connection implant. Well, if you think about the force transmission that's a different mechanics. So in external, as you see, you, if you give the force right here, 
then this is the rotating point. So this is a sensor to rotate, right? But if internal, it's against the power, uh, against the force, it can register from the internal area inside of the implant. So it resists more the force in internal, the connection implant, right? So that's uh, two implants are different mechanics. So that's what we th have to think about. And this is another article that shows if all these different implants has a different failure mode, okay? So if you expect have some easier problem to solve, you may need to choose certain implant. If not, if you want to choose less problem implant, but once it happened, it became severe. So it's all about weakest point. So you have to understand implant mechanics if you want to choose the implant that you want. Okay, so they have different, all these implants have a different failure mode, okay? Maybe external implant, you may experience more about screw loosening, right? But internal, you may experience less on screw loosening, but problem is you may experience more about abutment fracture and implant tearing because they have different failure mode, okay? So this is what it is. Uh, once you screw down on the extern external or internal, the weakest part of external is the screw, abutment screw, right? And weakest part of the implant, on the internal implant, are this area where the connections are, right? So that's the difference. So you have to understand different failure mode if you want to choose the implant that you use. Okay, so most of time, we're using the co conical steel design implant these days. Well, I'm using conical steel design most of time. I'm still using the external. I'm using the IT type, like the non-submerged type internal connection as well. But I'm, I'm gonna focus on conical steel design, okay? So this is the uh, picture when you put the abutment inside of the implant, okay? If you uh, place non-hex, if you place the hex abutment, then you may find these two contacts on the in inside of the implant. The upper part is the abutment, and lower part is the hex. So if you use the non-hex abutment, it means you only have one contact on top of the implant, right? So this is a picture of, uh, of internal connection with the hex abutment. Okay, so screw fracture because of lateral for, uh, force. So once you have force applied here in the occluder surface, and it lever like this. So this is the lo center of rotation. So this is the weakest point. So all the restoration became like rotate like this, against like this, then it happened with the screw fracture abutment fracture and fixture tearing or fracture happen, okay? So we have to think about reducing the lateral force because this part is the weakest point of the internal connection implant. Okay, so this is another picture. This is very important. I wanna, I wanna ask you to focus on this picture, okay? So once you screw down with the abutment in and screw down, this will happen. The upper part of the screw thread will touch the implant. As you see here, red arrows, right? And the lower part will not touch, okay? So this is a space. So the upper part of the thread is touching, and lower part of the thread is open. By the way, what's gonna happen if it touches lower as well? well, then the screw will not get in. The screw will not go, go in. It means you, you cannot screw down, right? So that's why all the screws in the world have same mechanics. So this, this is the part to touch on the top, and the lower part will be open. We'll leave the space, okay? So that's the important. I hope you remember this picture until end, okay?
Okay, I've tried many abutments and abutment from the all these different company and from the third party to the IF implant. Okay, some of them fit, some of them not. Okay, and the maybe you will think uh, you have heard about the uh, interchangeable abutment, right? But that's not the thing. If you think about fit itself, does not have too much meaning. Uh, each company use different material. Also, did they have different range of error? So I don't recommend to mix and match implant and abutment. Okay, so please use the proper abutment from same manufacturer of your implant. Okay, so that's my suggestion. Here is another interesting study which was done in Korea. Okay, and they use the Astra implant, 136 single implant. Right. So they use the anterior, premolar, and molar. And the, this is five-year cumulative survival. Uh, they investigate five-year cumulative survival rate of this 136 single implant. Okay. And they found, they found 12 of them were lost. Okay. And also 8% uh, of the implant had a coronal fracture, okay? And the 47 of 140, so it's about 41% of implant in the posterior region showed post-loading complication. The fracture of fixture, abutment, and the screw loosening. So it's a lot, right? Almost 40% of your implant have mechanical problem after five years. I think you need to change the office, right? So you need to move the office in this situation. But think about this study, they use all the abutments, use the cast abutment. So it means casting material is not suitable for the Astra implant. So you need, to, you have to think about the diameter of the implant, also the material of the abutment for the longevity. Right? Okay, so this is my main question. What's the implant? So they have like a Wikipedia and uh, many different journals and academy. Like uh, uh, they have, they decide to uh, uh, describe what the dental implants are, right? But for me, dental implant is a screw. Okay, so of course you, you may need to choose a cylinder type implant. But most of implants that we are using now is a screw, right? Also, this screw is rock down, like uh, you can tighten or you can connect the uh, processes by the screw. So implants are the screw which can connect the screw. So th we ha it's better to understand the screw mechanics for dental implants, okay? You know why screw get loose? Okay, let's talk about it. So once you da uh, screw down, put the abutments in, and once you screw down, you need to give, you give the torque, right, to the uh, abutment screw. So it means, right after you apply the torque, the force that comes, we say preload, right? It's similar, it's same to the clamping force, which is like a uh, holding force, right? So if you give the torque to the abutment screw, the preload and clamping force happens inside of the implant, right? Then if joint separating force is bigger than uh, clamping force, then screw get loose. But where it comes from the joint separating force, okay? That's we call it settling effect. Something else, embedment relaxation. So I write, the, I wrote down what the other, all these things are. So screw is tightened by applying torque. Okay, they apply the torque develops a force within the screw called preload. And as the screw tightens, it elongates, producing tension, right? And elastic recovery of the screw pulls the two parts together, so the creating clamping force, right? 
Okay, the cramping force versus in, uh, joint separating force which attempts to separate the screw joint. The screw loosening occurs when the joint separating force acting on the screw joint and greater than the cramping forces holding the screw unit together. Okay, so let's talk about embedment relaxation. Okay. Any metal, okay, so how carefully machined an implant surface it is slightly low, microscopically. So settling occurs at the loft, but or flattened under load. So since they are only contacting surfaces, when the initial tightening torque is applied. So as a result, the torque necessary to remove a screw is less than the torque initially used to place the screw. So that's why screw get loose by the settling effect and in, in uh, embedment relaxation. Okay, so let's think about it. If you tighten it too hard, what's gonna happen, okay? So here I have a case. Uh, I placed the neobiotic implant, external type implant, mini implant, not the regular implant. I, play, I put the torque about like a 20 Newton centimeter and screw strip. And suddenly I lost, the abutment was lost from the retention, okay? So if you give excessive force, you lose the clamping force. It means you lose the preload, okay? So we are think about about 75, uh, 70 to 75 percent of its strength to tighten the screw. That's the proper torque to give the screw. Okay, so don't tighten it too hard. Okay, so you have to think about ill strength. Okay, so proper screw uh, tightening is we tighten 10 minutes after initial torque application. So don't use your hand wrench, okay? Every time you tighten the screw, use, like for the final restoration, when you tighten the screw, you need to use the mechanical torque wrench, okay? That's the way you give the proper torque to the implant and the implant restoration. Okay, so proper yield strength to give the abutment screw is about 70 to 75 percent, okay? And excessive forces cause slipping between threads of the screw and threads of the bone resulting in a loss of preload, okay? So you have to use a mechanical wrench, torque wrench, and give the 75 percent of yield strength to the abutment screw. Okay, this is also important. What's going to happen right after you tighten the abutment screw, okay? So if you give the torque to the abutment screw in proper range, then torque reduces immediately after torque applied, okay? And it reduced until five hours. So once you tighten it, it became loose, the preload by the time, okay? So that's important. And what if you tighten again and again and again and again? Okay, someone tested about 200 times. Okay, we don't open and you know tighten it, tighten it, uh, re-tighten it uh, this much. But this article suggests do not frequently use the torque wrench on open and back, open and back. Okay, so it's better to change the abutment screw if you you know, tighten or reconnect, open and re uh, tighten it too often, okay? So uh, preload fall following tightening due to the plastic deformation of the screw and the uh, torsional recovery of the screw and the cyclic loading, like a chewing and biting, right? And also plastic deformation of joint component itself, like uh, let's say abutment and the connection part. And of course, overload is the one of the reason to lose the preload. Okay, here, this is very, you know, famous article which published in COIR. Okay, they use the three types of the implant and the five different types of abutment. So they use the external 
author used the external implant, right, with the hex abutment, okay? And second is the internal, abutment, internal connection implant, internal connection implant with the non-hex abutment and the solid abutment. So hex abutment and the non-hex abutment. And also they use the uh, submerged type implant, they use the solid abutment and the octa abutment, like a friction fit abutment, okay? And once they tighten it with the hand, right, five, a five Newton centimeter, and the they, they tighten harder with the, by the hand, 10 Newton centimeter, and every 10 minutes, they tighten it with the torque length, proper torque length, 30 Newton centimeter. So what's gonna happen, right? If you see the red one the, on top here, this is the internal connection implant with the hex abutment. So as you see here, from 30 Newton once, right, to the second, still the abutment goes in. Like, a, let's say, thinking, the vertical movement, so it goes down, right? Even it happened to the external, but it's not that much, right? Because the, that's the joint, is the metal touch the metal, right? So if you use the internal connection implant, you have to tighten it twice at least in 10, 10 minutes apart. So once you tighten with the uh, mechanical torque length with the 30 Newton centimeter, or proper or manufacturer suggested Newton centimeter, then wait 10 minutes, because we know the preload will go down, right? So after 10 minutes, you tighten it again with the proper torque length, okay? So that's the way you uh, properly treating the abutment screw when you connect the uh, restoration to the implant. There are similar studies that they have like a similar results. Okay, so what's gonna happen if abutment's sinking down? Is it gonna change the occlusion? Well, maybe, but most of the time, it's gonna lead the abutment through loosening or abutment problems such as abutment screw loosening and screw fracture, or abutment fracture, okay? But also, is it gonna also happen in the vertical? Sometimes it's gonna be oblique, right? So that's we have to think about the, when we think about, uh, when we talk about the thinking, right? The vertical displacement of the abutment. So proper way to treat the abutment screw is adequate torque with the mechanical torque length and with repeated tightening. So this is my treatment protocol to do the adequate torquing and repeated tightening of my restoration. So once I made the impression, I send the case to the lab. Okay, I ask them to make abutment and also the framework or cupping, right? And at the same time, I ask them to make a temporary crown. So once my uh, abutment goes in in patient mouth, I don't take it out, right? So I just do the lead tightening and lead tightening. And I'm loading with the temporary crown first, and after a while, I'm taking out the temporary crown like a natural dentition, then I'm tightening again. Then at that time, I made a pickup impression of coping or framework. Then send the lab, uh, case to the lab again, and I get back for the final restoration. So that's the way I treat the patient. So let's see another case. A patient will need the multiple implant, restoration and upper and lower posterior, okay? So I have too much to talk about this case, but I'm gonna skip it today for restoration part. So I made the framework and coping, right? And at the same time, I asked them to make a temporary crown to the, my lab technician. Okay, so I'm loading with this. Of course, I'm frequently tighten, retightening the abutment screw whenever a patient comes. Then at the end, like a few months later, I make a pickup impression of this framework and abut, uh, framework and cupping. Then I send the case to the lab again and I get back the final restoration. I cement this restoration. Okay, the other side I did same, okay. For this purpose, I don't remove the temp uh, abutment from patient mouth. 
So once, he, uh, once I get it, uh, I put it in, so I'm not going to remove it. So I am leave it and I'm tightening it again and again. So this is final result of the, that patient. Also this is a, what I call it, this is a panoramic radiograph of the patient. Previously I show you. Okay, so can you see the movie clip here? Well, restoration is movie. So what do you expect? Baby screw loosening? Or sometimes you, you may experience the screw fracture like this. So there are many out there in the market about the screw retriever uh, instrument. But the key point is you don't want to damage the inside of the implant, right? Inside of the thread or you don't want to damage the connection. So that's why you're going to need something like a plong like this to cover the abutment, to cover the connection, right? Sometimes you, you will see it's easy to remove the broken screw, sometimes not, right? So I'm dividing the situation like this. There are two different situations when you experience, when you see the screw, abutment screw fracture, okay? It's simple fracture. First one is a simple screw fracture without thread damage. So it means you have any instrument like an explorer, right? Then you can revert, uh, leave, uh, use the anticlockwise rotation of a broken screw, then you can easily retrieve the broken screw from the implant, okay? And I'm using the number 125C Explorer, sharp, and brand new Explorer, and I found it's e easier case, you can use it uh, to retrieve the broken screw. And second part, I, I couldn't find the pictures and I couldn't find the movie clip of what I'm using the low speed round contra angle round bar. So I'm using number six round bar, carbide round bar, to connect the contra angle without you pedaling. You're just holding on your hand and uh, put it in the implant and uh, touching the broken abutment screw and you give the anti rotation, then it come out. Right? So that's the easier part, and happy end, right? And also, you have to think about, you could fracture with the thread damage. So it means the broken part of the screw, on top of the broken part of the screw, the threads are damaged. So you may need to give the uh, torque or force to get rid of it, right? So then you're gonna need some special instrument. So I'm gonna introduce a few of them I'm using, right? So this is a uh, screw retriever remover kit from the Neobiotech. I love it, right? So I'm gonna talk about step by step. The first step is first instrument that I wanna introduce is the claw instrument. It has a two leg, right? Like a claw, and I also have a different diameter, depends on different abutment diameter, right? So you put, a, put the guide, on top of the implant, then use the anti, like a clockwise, counterclockwise rotation with a slow speed. They recommend to have a 50 Newton centimeter, uh, 50 RPM, but sometimes you just need to use it, to use it by hand, okay? It goes in with the guide to the implant, right, like this. Then you uh, place the cloud drill to retrieve the abutment screw. Okay, so rotation with the fingers are okay. Even you, if you want to use the engine, then go slow with the 50 RPM. Okay, so place, they have a different connections, right? They have a different guides to the different implant, for the different implant. So once you place the guide like this, So it has fit the connection, right? So use the cloud drill with the slow speed, then screw will go up. Right? So it catches with the two leg, right? If, because the abutment screw fracture, any part have a rough surface. So as you see here, use the anti-clockwise uh, anti rotation, then screw will come out. So you see it's moving up like this.
Okay, so they have a different reverse grill and screw remover. So this is step two. Okay, so if it's not working with the crowd drill, so you need to make indentation in the screw, broken screw, then you take it out with the screw remover. Okay, so you make indentation on top of the broken screw. Then you catch with the screw remover. So it's holding because uh, the indentation on top of the abutment screw. Okay, let's see another movie clip. If you have a broken screw like here, you place the guide to the in, uh, connect to the implant. Then you make intent indentation and broken screw. And you remove the guide. Then it catches with the remover drill, reverse drill. Okay, so drilling into the screw, so you, you have to think about uh, this protocol. Use new drill if possible and reverse direction. So rotate with the anti-clockwise, counterclockwise rotation and one millimeter drilling and use the lower stop to see, to make indentation, okay? So you have to use the copy, uh, you have to use the instrument under the copious water spray and also you have to give the vertical pressure only. Okay, and uh, remove it with the contra angle hand piece. Okay, so these are the protocol to use the step two, right? So you make indentation and holding and catching and remove the abutment screw like this. Okay, so this is cases. Uh, this one is a case from one of my colleague, Professor uh, Dr. Jo Young Jin, and he experienced three times of the abutment screw on the internal implant, and finally. He removed and he replaced the dental implant a long time ago and he haven't experienced any problem of internal implant. I think internal implant is very picky when there is the mechanical problem. Okay, so these are the pictures from another my call of friends, Dr. Kim Do Young. And this is a Batman fracture case. He has many of them. Okay. So, have you ever experienced the abutment fracture of internal connection implant? You know, most frequently it happened on the first molar on mandible. I show you why. Okay, because of a medial distal dimension is wider than any other area. Sometimes we think about placing two implants instead of one implant for one missing tooth because there is too much medial distal space. Right? Well, we cannot change the medial distal space because the, that's the part that we have to cover. So we have to think about buccolingual dimension. Okay? So try to make crown occlusal table smaller okay? to reduce the, for reducing the lateral forces. Okay? So this is my, one of my case and uh, I made crown like this. I try to reduce the uh, buccal lingual dimension or in terms of occlusal table. Okay, so this is how it looks at the end. Okay, at a time, long time ago, this is what we used to do. We call it hygienic type of restoration. But I don't do this anymore, right? Nobody, I think, in the world does this anymore. So, but. These are the, these yellow circles, uh, the implant crown that I made for the patient, my, uh, for my patient. I tried to make a smaller crown or smaller restoration for my patient because I want to reduce the lateral forces. Well, mostly we're using these three types of the connection, external or internal or internal submerged like a tissue level implant. So we call it in uh, Neobiotech, they have EV external, IS internal submerged, and IT, something similar to the ITI type, okay? If force apply 
to the occlusion, like a crown of the dental implant. Okay? As you see, force transmitted, right, rectangular to the bone and the, to the implant. So distance from here and here, if you compare, this submerged type has much longer distance because it placed the deeper, right? So the force and rotation center was top on the ITI, ITI type, which is favorable for a force transmission, right? So if you think about to placing single implant on the lower posterior, maybe you need to uh, think about to choose this type of implant better than this, right? And this is our suggestion as well. Also, diameter of the implants are important. So if you put replacing the premolar, you can use a regular, like a 4.0 diameter implant. Okay? If you are replacing the molars and posteriors, then think about at least use more than 4.5 diameter implant. Okay? So that's the way you are safer from the abutment fracture and the screw fracture. Okay, so for single molar missing, this is my suggestion. So avoid use of internal conical steel design if you have enough space. Or the like uh, in terms of occlusal uh, clearance, okay, and use wider implant at least more than bigger than 4.5 diameter implant, okay, and also you have to reduce the cantilever in any direction. We all worry about the distal cantilever all the time, but sometimes medial cantilever can cause the mechanical problem of the implant. So you have to think about the mesial, distal, or any direction, even it's the buccal or lingual direction of cantilever. So you have to reduce the cantilever to uh, reduce the problem, okay? And also occlusal adjustment and follow-up check is important. So narrower occlusal table and uh, reduce the cusp inclination to decrease the lateral force of the implant. So that's important. Well, so let's, so, uh, let me show you a different story, okay? So as you see here, uh, this canine here, number 13, is the implant. And th number 23 is the implant as well. Can you see the difference? Maybe this yellow arrow looks a little darker. And you, can see, you can see the shadow on the gum, on the soft tissue, right? So number 13 is the zirconia abutment and the, the zirconia crown. And number 23 is the prefabricated abutment, so metal crown, metal abutment, and the PFM crown, right? So that's uh, the difference. So we use a different material for number 13 and number 23, right? So you see the uh, gray shadow underneath of number 23, okay? Well, human eyes can catch any soft tissue not less thicker than two millimeter, then you can notice the, what the materials are. Okay. Also, the zirconia is less attractive to the plaque. So it's good for the gingiva health as well. Also, the zirconia abutments were reliable in the anterior region from the both biological and mechanical points of view and for the anterior. Okay. Well, this is a case from uh, Dr. Jonghwa Kim, who presented last week. Okay, he used the zirconia abutment and zirconia crown, and had a school uh, like a proximal contact loss. He wants to fix the proximal contact loss that he wants to retrieve. Then abutment were broke. Okay, so what's going to happen is the zirconia abutment moving inside of the implant. So that's a ho horrible thing. Right? That may damage the inside of the implant. So with that, we have to worry about. Even in external case, zirconia abutment can broke, right? So this is one of the case that I published with uh, Professor Im Young Jun from Seoul National University. Okay? So they, he removed all the broken abutment, and we he made the impression like this, and we Scan on the model sc table scanner, then we send the case to the lab and he designed, not designed, he scanned the broken part of the abutment. 
So as you see here, this is the empty part, we, uh, parts that we lost, right? Then we draw on top of the broken part. Then we made, we come up with the new titanium abutment and new zirconia abutment. Okay, and we adjust it on the model and we try it in patient mouth like this with the old restoration. So we haven't changed the restoration, we just changed the abutment because the abutment were broke, right? So this is what we deliver and we publish in JPD. So if you are want to think, see the detail, you need to go, go to the JPD and you can find the article, okay? Because of we have many problems of the zirconia abutment, we use, uh, these days we're using frequently about the link abutment and the socket type abutment. Okay, so this is one of my case. Patient experienced the root fracture twice. Uh, so I decided to go for the implant for number 11. So light center incisor. Okay. So this is the picture after final restoration. As you see here, I have a hybrid abutment, which has link abutment. So metal uh, touches metal to the abutment, like a connection. And on top of that, on top of the link, I place the zirconia core. Then on top of it, I cement the zirconia cap. So this is link abutment. You can see the all different direction of my abutment, like this. Then try it in patient mouth and cement it on the inpatient mouth. So this is hybrid abutment, which will give the better aesthetic in terms of if you have less than two millimeters of tissue on the gum, then you can use and you can choose this type of abutment. The problems are this type of the abutment also can have many mechanical problems. So these pictures are from the professor Park Ji-man, who worked in the Yonsei University in Korea. And he used it in the posterior, and patient come, out, come with the restoration and broken abutment. Okay, it, it's, it's working for the anterior, but if you think about to use the po, uh, posterior, I don't recommend to use the posterior too often. Okay? Even for the anterior, it can broke if you have to you know, alterate the uh, link. If you have to grind or cut the link, then you better not to use because you can easily loss of uh, retention, okay? This is my case. And this is one of my senior of dental school. He came with a broken, you know, anterior restoration. I placed two implants, okay? I give him immediate restoration. And uh, these implants were okay was okay, but this implant was tilted to the distal to get the initial stability, okay? But by the way, I made the titanium abutment and zirconia abutment for this, my senior patient, okay? And this is the, I overwrapped the hybrid abutment and the uh, titanium abutment. So you see the hybrid abutment is bulky on the subgingival area, okay? And this is, uh, final restoration of this. But this patient has thick gingiva, thick soft tissue. So you cannot see that much of difference of uh, using hybrid abutment or titanium abutment. So don't try to use for every patient of hybrid abutment, if possible, in case that patient have less than two millimeter thickness of the soft tissue, then you can use it uh, for the anterior area only. Okay, so hybrid abutment, the so titanium link and zirconia core, we don't know too much about it so far. So only consider to use it in a limited case, such as anterior case when patient have not thick gingiva, right? And also, I, I asked my lab technician design first, the abutment design first. Then I uh, overwrap the link if I don't need to change anything, then I'm going to go for the hybrid abutment. So if I have to cut off or if I, if I have to grind it off the abutment, then I stop use, I ask my lab technician, don't do that. I'm just going to use the titanium abutment. Okay, so that's the way I do. Okay, so today 
we were discussed about the screw mechanics. So I hope you understand screw mechanics. Those are basic, but those are the knowledge that you have to leave all the time as a dentist if you are treating the implant. Okay. Well, I emphasize etiquette torquing and repeated tightening for the implant. So the way I do is I tighten it and put the temporary uh, temporary crown in and ask the patient come again about a few weeks later. Then I tighten it again and I made a pickup impression and send the case to the lab for the final restoration. So I wait until sinking, 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 right? So I don't remove the abutment once I put in. So that's the way I treat the implant these days. Okay, so I also talk about the vertical deplacement and settle down of the abutment. So it's the same, you tighten again, 10 minutes later, you tighten it again, right? So that's the important thing. Well, can you change the screen? Okay, so internal connection in single molar replacement is not super recommended. Okay, so you have to think about the non-submerged, like a uh, non-submerged type, like a tissue level implant for single molar replacement if you have enough occlusal clearance. Okay, and also we have to think about occlusal clearance, abutment, abutment selection, and design for the anteriors and posterior. Okay, well, you need to have delicate occlusal adjustment for the implant. Okay, also I always leave the bite mousse registration right after delivery of the implant. That's the way you can observe the occlusal change of dental implant. Okay. Well, as I told you, the implant dentist implant dentistry is not a trouble free. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to live and we have to fight with all these mechanical problems like a screw fracture, a screw loosening and abutment fracture and implant tearing. Okay? So you have to give the proper information to the patient. You may experience some mechanical, some biological problem later on. That's why you need to come to, you need to show, me, show up for the follow-up check or periodically. Okay? This is one of very famous article from Dr. Goodacre. So these are the one of the series of article and he investigated and he found the all the problems of fixed dental restoration and implant restoration. So these are the part two. If you see it, screw uh, problems, okay, prosthetic screw loosening, abutment screw loosening, and prosthetic screw fracture, and all, etc. cetera, okay, you may experience more than like a, uh, 20%, let's say, okay, 20%, right. So if you have a problem, implant problem, if that's the mechanical thing, then one, half, one out of five are the screw and also the implant mechanical problem. Okay? So you have to consider this mechanical problem as big and essential part that you have to think about when you're treating the dental implant. Okay? So my clinic, the name of my clinic is Smart Dental, okay? So you have to be smart to the, uh, treat the implant dentistry if you want to get rid of the mechanical issues. Okay, so that's it for today. And that's, that was my last slide for today. And thank you very much for your attention. And thank you for joining us. But before I close, don't forget to sub subscribe this channel because we have different programs and you know, the different lectures regularly. So you, that's an easier way to you connect with us. So please subscribe this channel before you leave. Okay. Did you have any question? Okay, so thank you for being with me. Okay, I hope you have a safe work and uh, safe with uh, by yourself and for your family and for your patient. Okay, so stay safe and stay healthy. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go back, come back later on. Thank you.